<laughs> well, come on, Jay. I can't believe that was really you singing on the rooftops, was it? Yeah, actually, that's how I get in. Oh, are you sure it wasn't Marnie Nixon or someone like that dubbing you? you know? No, I thought the band would get that one. Now, come on, can we play that back again? I'd like to just see that. I don't believe it was really you singing. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. You can tell a real singer goes no, like that. No, that wasn't you. <laughs> oh, yes, yes. Really? Oh, yeah. Bit of a cold now. I see. <laughs> Believe me, you know, I'm so embarrassed I can't duplicate it for you today. This no, I was wondering if you could. Yeah, yeah, I thought, oh, when she's here, maybe we can do a thing together. Could you sing something else, like supercalifragilistic or something like that? Gee, with this throat thing, it's oh. really... <laughs> But it's a good way to get you to come back, you see, and then we, we could do it the next time. Okay. No, actually, I want to get, you know, I look at this picture, and I look at the, the lovely suite, and I look at the hands folded in prayer there, the sweet Julie Andrews. Aww. Aww. Then I'm talking to a friend of yours who was on this program quite regularly, Who's Carol that? Burnett. Ah. And I said, oh, Julie Andrews is coming on, and da-da-da-da. Now, she said to me, and maybe I'm speaking out of school here, she said, oh, she can outcuss anybody, and I was shocked. Oh, no, she, she didn't, did she? Yes, yes. No. Yes, yes. Really? Yes, she did. She said I could... She said you could outcuss anybody. Well, that bitch, I tell you. Unbelievable. Okay, Mr. Huh? Thank you very much. <laughs> she told me... No, she said that you guys used to have, like, wild times. She said, I'm supposed to ask you about... Uh, you guys went to inaugural together? Oh, yes. yes. That, that, <laughs> that's a funny story. She's really my best chum, and she's, right. she's godmother to one of my children, and, and we adore each other. But, uh, but we, she's we still have, a bitch, is what you're saying. But she's still yeah. a bitch at times, yeah. Uh, we, we've done some stupid things together, we really have, and we were doing an, a, a duet together at President Johnson's inaugural uh, gala. And we were waiting for Mike Nichols to arrive. We were in the hotel. We were, you know, chums, and we said, well, uh, he should be here any second. Let's do something to, to, to make him laugh. And, and Mike called, and he said, I'll come down, and we'll have some hot chocolate or something together. I'm coming right away. So we said, well, let's go meet him at the elevator and do something silly. So uh, we went to the elevator, and we were dressed in our dressing gowns and jammies and stuff like that. And uh, uh, we said, well, what should we do? And I said, or she said, well, let's be kissing or something like that. So I bent her over in this tremendous kiss, and uh, the elevator went bing! And the doors opened, and it was filled with an absolutely, you know, massive of Secret Service men and people that I'd never seen before. Right. <laughs> so uh, we thought, well, Mike must be coming down. He said he was coming down right away, so should we do it again? Yeah, let's do it again. So we bent her into this deep, deep kiss, and the elevator went ping, and Carol swears that Lady Bird Johnson stepped out of the elevator. <laughs> And what was so funny was that Carol immediately went round behind the sofa and left me sitting there. <laughs> but uh, uh, the lady went halfway down the hall, and you could see her sort of thinking about it. And she came back, and she said, Ex excuse me, but aren't you Carol Burnett? And Carol said, yeah, and that's Mary Poppins, she said. <laughs> <laughs> and, of course, finally Mike showed up. <laughs> and uh, he just walked past us and said, oh, hi, girls. And, you know, we never got that a laugh it. out of him at all. Really <laughs> Let's take a little break. Mom would surely run after this. Be right back. Welcome back. Talking with uh, Julie Andrews, close friend of that uh, bitch, Carol Burnett. Yeah. Oh, stop. <laughs> At least that we get to keep that going and going. And going. Well, you know, we, we talk about the goody two shoe image, but actually, you, you had a, a, a topless scene in, in, a, in a movie. I know, because I, I stopped it and rewound it a few times. I see. <laughs> <laughs> so, what? Now, I mean, the decision to, to do that, I mean, was, weren't there people saying, oh, my God, you can't, not with you, you, your image and Mary Poppins, and, oh, my God. I mean, I, well, no, that was the whole point, is yeah, that well, it was yeah. about this lady who had such a squeaky, squeaky clean image that she couldn't, I can't even say it, <laughs> she, that she uh, had to sort of get loaded in order to be able to do this, uh, this porno movie. 
But it was funny. The funny part about it was not doing the shot. It was getting ready to do the shot because it was a specially rigged costume. Yeah. And Blake originally, my, my husband who directed it, originally wanted just one boob. Just and one boob. Just one boob, yeah. yeah. And so... Uh, uh, we got the costume all ready, and I pulled away the rag, and I said, how's that, Blake? And he said, no, nah, we better go with two. Yeah. And so... Go widescreen. Widescreen, right. Yeah. And uh, so then uh, we rigged the costume again, and, uh, and it was so embarrassing to have to keep saying, how's that, Blake, you know? And uh, then the question to Julie was, Andrews, do we push him in, or do we push him up, or do we move <laughs> them up? And uh, that was the funny part. It would have made a movie all by itself. Uh, I, that's a movie I would have seen over and over again. <laughs> Maybe a few outtakes here and there. Well, were some people shocked? Did you get... I mean, you all get mail on both sides. No. no the, real, the funny thing was, I yeah. thought maybe I would, but to, to a letter, everybody said, right on, Jules. You know, yeah, right, yes, yes. yes, that's right, yes. That's what I said. <laughs> we will not find a man in this house if we disagree it doesn't, with Yeah, but these were ladies, too. <laughs> <laughs> now, Victor Victoria, obviously, you played... Now, you played a, you played a woman playing a man playing a woman. Right. right? I get the, that confused about it also, yes. Oh, okay. Yes. Now, playing a man, did you find that odd? Did it seem odd? Were, were there... It was It was interesting. It, it, obviously, I don't think anybody for a minute thought no. I really was, no. but Blake set it up well enough, and, and, and it sort of, it was a wonderful story, and we're going to be doing it on uh, Broadway next year. We're coming uh, to uh, um, Broadway in the fall of next year, and going to Chicago in the summer, and making a musical out of it. Oh, so, that sounds yeah. great. Yeah. Now, now, now what did you, did you read, did you learn things, what do you do differently as the man? Well, I asked James Garner and Robert Preston a great deal about what they thought and how I should say. The hardest thing was wearing that white tie and tails, which is so stiff, and I, I don't know how you guys manage that. Oh, women don't know what we men I go through. I know. So get, you, know <laughs> you know, to get ready, it is ours, right guys? Just I know. Hours and hours. You know, women think we men go in the bathroom, put the face on, and we're out. We're not. It's yeah. ours and ours. Oh, well, I can understand it in this particular case. Yes. <laughs> anyway, I... Uh, <laughs> anyway, it was, it was not that big a deal. But, I mean, you know, I think that men in general are a little bit less busy than ladies. Ladies are full of the hands and, the, right. you know, the, the batting of the eyelashes and the crossing of the legs. And men kind of just kind of, well, they kind of sit like that, and, you know. Yeah. Isn't that it? Yeah. That's well, pretty good. Never mind. Let me ask you about the CD now. This is the uh, music of Richard Rodgers. Oh, that was a joy to do. Yes, yeah, yes. I made it in London, and it was a huge symphony orchestra and some of the loveliest music I've ever sung. It's kind of enjoying an, a, a, a new phase. That, you know, he wrote for Broadway for like six decades, and, and the music is just wonderful. Well, terrific. It is a pleasure to have you here. Thank and you. And any, anybody that calls... Anybody that calls Calvin and a bitch on this show is okay. Julie, thank you very, very much. Julie, I'll be right back right after that.